Hi folks, hope you're keeping well. <coughs> I've come to this uh, Beechwood and I can't say it's one of my favourite places. It's a beautiful place, don't get me wrong, but it's a very important place because just up here over to your left is the site of a ancient Viking meeting place. I think the stats are that it was a, a circular mound and it was large enough to have entertained a thousand people and uh, at the top of the mound there there's a standing stone marking the site for whoever presided over events it would have been where disputes were resolved i think the uh, the history books state that the shield had something like 1500 vikings settle here after they invaded and the surrounding area was cut up into little plots and uh, no doubt there were boundary disputes and marital disputes and livestock disputes so it was certainly a place that they would have come to have fixed things it's quite difficult to get to but what i plan to do is bring the drone and if i move over to the margins just to my right here there's some young silver birch and uh, there'll be some spaces in there where I'll be able to get up into the air quite easily. So I'll, I'll bring you back one day over the summer and uh, see if we can get an aerial view of that Viking meeting place. But that's not for today. Today I've got a couple of things in mind. Very relaxed, gradual, ease me back into things. The first thing I want to do is explain my absence, why I haven't, bless you, well, I haven't been around for a few weeks. Next thing I want to do, I've got a Machu Picchu. Is that right? I knew that was wrong before I said it. <laughs> it's a coffee from Tesco's. It says Machu Picchu on the Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, Machu Picchu, Picchu. I've bought a fresh coffee with me, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to get some water on the bubble in a minute, and I'm going to uh, pour myself a brew. And then I wanted to have a quick chat about my last video um, because photographically speaking a lot's changed for me. So why haven't I been around then? Short story is, um, some of you already know because you'll follow me on Instagram and I posted there. I tried to share it with as many people as I could so that there wasn't just a, a void for my weekly slot. <laughs> I'll buzz off. Um, but I imagine it didn't reach everyone so my mum had been ill for a long time nearly 18 months and in this last few months we've had some pretty serious battles with organizations trying to organize suitable care for her and uh, it's been all-encompassing it's took every ounce of strength we've had uh, as a family and um, for a few months between organizing her care and getting the practical stuff resolved the rest of the time has been spent at her bedside and uh, it's just left no space at all for video emotionally physically practically in any way i just haven't been able to get out um haven't felt like it and i haven't i haven't had the opportunity so 
these things happen, don't they? And uh, it's just one of those unfortunate pauses. It, it, it broke my consistency. I, I'd managed to keep quite consistent posts for quite a while. And uh, so, yeah, very sadly, she passed away Easter weekend. And anybody who has experienced the loss of a parent will know that at that time, it doesn't mark the end of anything. It marks the start of a whole raft of practicalities. You have to deal with things and as emotional as it is it doesn't stop the wave of stuff coming at you that you need to deal with so for a week or two after it's been full on again it's just been a, a constant stream of jobs and talking to people and organizing things so this last week is the first chance i've had to really get out and i've i've snuck out like a thief in the night very quietly and just took my camera off into the trees and tried to breathe a little bit, you know. I hope now that things are resolved practically that I'll be able to just try and find a routine again and hopefully pick up where I kind of left off and uh, build up that consistency again. There's a lot of flies around this morning. It's nice to see. I've not seen flies for a few months, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about them. I'll soon get fed up there, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'll soon get on my nerves. Anyway, when I get that coffee on, that'll, that'll scare a few off. They don't like the fumes off of bioethanol. Right. I'm okay yet. I can keep going for a little while. So I think I'll talk about my last video. I've tried recording this once, and it got waffly, as I thought it would. It's a very complicated thing for me to try and share so i'm going to start again i'm going to try again i'm in no rush i'm going to keep this as brief as i can it may mean that i miss out some bits and bobs it might not come across complete and at the expense of that i think it's still okay because i'm just going to share the fundamental principle of this which is that if you experience a similar crisis moment <laughs> some sort of an issue with your relationship with photography you don't know what the heck's happening as I did um, at least you'll know somebody else has suffered and you're not on your own and that's really what this video is about it's just me sharing my experience to try and let other people know people who are passionate about their photography who really are serious as a creative outlet not just a tool to capture stuff as a creative process if you suffer that identity crisis almost as if you don't know why you're doing this anymore i just want you to know you're not alone that i think it's normal i, I personally having looked at other photographers and their journeys i see this is repeated a lot of famous photographers go through these times where they question why they're doing it and it's never focused on, it's never given to us in detail. We're never told to expect this to happen to us. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm saying expect this to happen to you. Expect you're going to one day come home from a casual photo shoot, sit down and lose the will to pick a camera up again. And you don't know why. That's it. And I'm also going to give you just one tip, just one, to find fresh motivation above and beyond any that you had before because that's how I feel today I feel far more motivated to shoot today than I have done in the last few years that's the truth I think as photographers serious photographers I'll, I'll keep saying serious photographers because I'm talking about the ones that go to bed thinking about it and wake up thinking about it if it's in your blood or you feel like it is somewhere in your blood serious photography if you're constantly thinking about it and looking outside of photography to the visual arts for information, like I, I study some of the classical artists from the, particularly the 18th century, and I look at how they composed their art, how they studied chromatics, it motivates me. And I extract some of that information when I post-process my images, serious photographers. I think there are two times when we face changes there are for me. Um, the first time 
is when it's a conscious decision, when we make the decision ourselves. And I think those times relate to mostly how we shoot or what we shoot. So I've made decisions about format, for instance. It could be as simple as you change your camera every three or four years, or you change medium. So you might start to print, for instance, out of nowhere and choose to give it a go. Or you may go to a four thirds camera or a medium format, or you might move to film from digital or vice versa. How you shoot, it can be a conscious decision that you take to make a shift somehow, a subtle change. And that's how we learn, isn't it? It's how we grow, it's how we evolve. Or what we shoot, we might be feeling that it's becoming a bit samey. We become over familiar with the subjects that we shoot. We might be shooting, say, portraits and we decide that we want to get into macro or we might be out shooting woodland landscape and we decide we want to get into boudoir. I mean, the opportunities to shoot different material are vast. So there's, there's that. There's that conscious cognitive time where we, as the photographer, choose to make a, a shift, subtle shift in how or what we shoot. That's the first type. And then the second type is this unconscious, subconscious shift. Something makes us question not how we shoot or what we shoot, but why we shoot. And it comes from nowhere. For me, it certainly does. And for some of the artists I've, I've seen experience similar shifts, I don't know a better word for it, it's not by design. They didn't deserve it and it's quite, it's quite a crisis. I have even seen some photographers talk about the time they sold their gear and it came from or out of this period of uncertainty, not knowing why they were doing it, losing the motivation to shoot. And it's not because the subject doesn't motivate them anymore, because they end up going back to it in the end. Most of them do. <laughs> you might put your camera down for a few years, but you're going to come back. So if you know that, if you know, which I didn't really, I hadn't pieced it together. I'd seen the stories in isolation, but I didn't really understand it. But if you know that this can happen, if you know that out of nowhere, you can be thrust into a decision about why you're shooting and not knowing wh where you are and what you're doing and why you're doing it and everything feels too much, it's all overwhelming. You question it, you question yourself and you question your motivation. You don't have any answers. I didn't. I think it's normal. I think it's part of the, I think it's part of the learning curve. And if you're serious, if you're a serious photographer, if it means that much to you, as it does to me, I think you'll face this if you haven't already and I'd be really interested to know if anybody has comments below please so I just want I just want this video to act as a sorry for my absence we can get a coffee on in a minute and if you face one or the other types of these changes in your photography and it feels somewhat overwhelming or you even feel like jacking in <laughs> then don't don't sack it off don't give up on it and the, the tip I've got the single tip that I have is this think about it in the context of the, the cognizant conscious decisions that we make to change direction with our photography that's one type and that's natural it's normal it's routine, it happens regularly enough, and it helps us grow, it helps us develop, and it's healthy, I think. And then there's this other type. And when this other type comes your way, and it feels quite threatening, a little bit more severe perhaps, just don't, don't think about how you shoot, and don't think about what you shoot. Forget your subject, forget your gear, forget your medium, and just Pay attention, single-mindedly, to why you do it. Think about what it is that motivates you to get up at three o'clock in the morning 
or to go somewhere, to travel distance to a location just on the half-hearted chance that you may have half a shot. Because we do it, don't we? We, we, we push ourselves that hard at times. But if you can find fresh motivation, if you can work out for yourself a new why, then you can only grow. It can only lead on to bigger and better things. And personally, I don't want to make this about me. I want to make it about the principle, but I just feel so much more invigorated having been through that process for those several turbulent days after that last video. Just, just reviewing why I do it has made a world of difference to me. So that's that's the nutshell. That's it in a nutshell. And I, I, I just want to let people know that it's out there. It's coming for you. <laughs> Be prepared. <laughs> so practically, then, what's changed for me, and what's coming? The thing that changed for me is. The reason why I will get up at three o'clock in the morning. I want to keep this short. For years and years I've known the Shield Forest National Nature Reserve is just over a thousand square acres. It's a thousand and forty-six square acres to be precise. Of ancient times, about 1200 AD CE, AD CE, CE, current era, 1200 CE, it was reported that Shield Forest was in excess of 100,000 square acres. So many years ago, I put two and two together and realized that man has erased 99% of ancient Shield in 800 years. And it's not in the headlines. We don't talk about it. Irrelevant, doesn't matter. And I'm here saying it, it bloody well does matter. It really does matter. So, I was motivated, I'm not going to get into any eco-warrior blurb. I knew this place was under threat, we were down to the last 1% and it felt urgent. So I wanted to do something in the only way I knew how, and that was through photography, document this place. Record this 1% as I know it to be today. And the second thing I wanted to do was to share it with people who aren't as fortunate as I am to have this on their doorstep. A lot of urban dwellers and coastal dwellers, hill dwellers, a lot of people don't have access to woodland like this, ancient woodland. So it gave me an opportunity to share little slices of it with people who, who like to see it. And that, that was my motivation, has been my motivation for probably eight years or so. And it was always enough to get me out of bed in the early hours. It was always enough to keep me going. I never questioned it. I just accepted it. And it's been in the background. That's it. That's why I do this. If anybody asked me, I'd say that. After the last video, that dissolved completely. I'm still going to be shooting it. I'm still motivated to document and capture the 1%. And I still want to share it with people. That hasn't changed. But the motivation that was attached to it dissolved completely. It would not have got me out of bed at three o'clock in the morning again. I was done. <laughs> and that, that was the thing that, that scared me most, is I lost it. I lost that motivation. So, skipping along, I had to work out what I was going to do. Where was my motivation going to come from? And it's come from the story. It's come from... It's okay me documenting it, but what's the point? I've got to fly, I'm sorry. What's the point in me documenting it if it's not going to go anywhere? What's the point in me sharing it with people if they don't understand the issue here, you know? So, it's, it's detailed, it's complex. If we meet face to face and we have a cup of coffee, I'll bore the beans out of you for an hour or two just talking about this, but I won't do it today. It's just that my motivation now comes from finding ways to communicate the story through photography so i'm looking for new ways to share what's important here <sighs> the real issues the real the real substance behind the images and that's going to get me up at three o'clock no bother 
that's going to get me coming back time and time again no bother i feel completely fresh about it completely motivated it feels new all of a sudden and i've been shooting this place for a decade or and longer but seriously for about a decade and if you think about this this is this is the fundamental message in a space of three days after that last vlog i went from questioning whether or not i should sell my gear and pick a paintbrush up again <laughs> to being more motivated than i have been in the last decade which is nuts that's such a swing of emotion such a swing of drive it's as if i i don't know what it's as if it's just nuts it's just it, it, hello bumblebee hey up fella nice to see you around thanks for not stinging me so yeah it's nuts it's just it's just nuts i know it is i know it sounds crazy but if you experience it like maybe this video will help maybe it will just touch a nerve and you'll think you know what i'm okay <laughs> i'm not the only one <laughs> it's going around a twist so what fell out of it then that was the shift in my motivation but what fell out of that and in that week after that last vlog i started three projects and it's to print three zines i've got sherwood one sherwood two spelt the old english way and a third called the one percent collection and the first that will be printed is sherwood one it's getting close towards pre pre-production and it'll be a zine format it'll be a it'll be at the higher end of the zine quality but not quite printed book quality and that will afford us the opportunity to sell it at an inexpensive price. It can be a coffee table type publication. Now, I want to add value, as much value to it as I can. So I'll only be printing a limited edition run. There'll be perhaps 200, 250, the absolute maximum. And each will come with a, a, an embossed certificate of authenticity. They'll be individually numbered. And that limited edition run, when it's done, it's gone, it's finished. That will be it. Keeping it inexpensive means it can reach most people. And hopefully the content in that zine will share a message about this place. In images and a few words. And I'm highly motivated by that. That's, that's really got my fires burning bright. And I've got to get my coffee on, it's just reminded me. So that's the first scene, Shield 1. Shield 2 is going to be mono, black and white, and a bit more atmospheric. It's the kind of thing I'll process in the early hours of the morning when I can't sleep, or when I've got a bit of a, I don't know, a grungy vibe on. Uh, and again, it'll capture a different perspective of this place, but back into Shield 1, Shield 2. Over time, my ambition, whether it comes off or not, is another thing, is to create three four five six limited edition zines that will ultimately become chapters in a book and that book will be very high end very limited print run and perhaps only 100 copies maximum um, and that's going to be some years away despite my, my history here i'll be shooting for it i won't be taking old stock images and just cobbling things together it will come from today it will come from fresh stock as far as I know, it's still 1,046 acres, it's still 1%, and that's the third collection, the 1% collection. And that will be an independent zine, again, limited edition, but focused on the juxtapose concept of this place. Images from this place juxtapose images from the 99%. From the street photography, I've, I've started to shoot. Select images out there that contradict what we see here it backs into the same thing and i have several other projects that i'm already thinking about that are going to come forward as well some will materialize some won't so i'll keep them to myself for now this is enough to be going on with <coughs> excuse me and it's certainly enough to get things started so that's what practically fell out of the few days after the last vlog and fresh motivation and I'm looking at this place through completely different eyes, always thinking about sharing the story rather than just capturing the beauty. 
and that's amazing it's just amazing <laughs> so before I put my cup on let me just check that coffee out Machu Picchu Machu Picchu Machu Picchu stay it is Peruvian coffee and it says I'm only quoting what it says on the packet it says ridiculously good coffee ridiculously good coffee ridiculously good business cafe direct <coughs> it's a four grit full bodied with dark chocolate overtones 100% organic arabica I'm going to try that any time now and I think I've taken up enough of your time thanks for sticking with me folks sorry about the absence I hope to get more consistent again very very soon and Hopefully that won't break any time in the long term. But until next time, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful. And I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.